What if I told you that halfway across the globe, there are hundreds, maybe even thousands, of abandoned supercars slowly decaying in the desert? In parking garages, impound lots, and even on the side of the road, these cars were just ditched and forgotten about. But why? Who left them there? And how do I buy one? We're gonna answer all these questions and more on today's episode. Let me tell you, it's not just rich guys ditching their cars. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Buff, buff horses. Well, sorry, I didn't know you were there. Uh, <laughs> Caught me in the middle of a Raycon ad. Now, I know on the outside, I sound a little rusty, but with these Raycon everyday E25s in my ears, I sound like this. The everyday E25s keep me rocking with six hours of playtime, and with those noise isolating compact design, I can rock as hard as I want to, and they'll never fall out. Don't mind them. Those are just the other celebrities who use Raycon. It's not saying that I'm a celebrity, all right? What's even better is they sound just as amazing as those other premium earbuds, but at half the price. Plus, they don't just come in boring old white, all right? Raycons come in a range of fun colors and patterns, so you can get the pair that best fits you. And if they aren't perfect, Raycon offers a free 45-day return policy. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com donut to get 15% off your Raycon purchase today. I promise you, you won't regret it. I use these things like every day and uh, only sometimes my wig gets stuck in them. No one is exactly sure how many supercars are deteriorating in the desert climate of Dubai, but it's a ton. And it's kind of infuriating that cars like this one of 399 made Ferrari Enzo, this Bugatti Veyron, this Jaguar XJ220, and this Toyota Formula One race car are all just dying a slow death. Is this the work of some spoiled Arab princes with too much money on their hands? Well, actually, it's a lot deeper than that. And to understand why these cars were left, we have to take a closer look at how this city operates. Dubai is the largest city in terms of population in the sovereign state of the United Arab Emirates, or UAE for short. Nowadays, Dubai is known for its insane architecture like the Burj Khalifa, which I think is the tallest building in the world, incredible opulence like this indoor ski hill, and anything expensive you could ever dream of, which is why it attracts some of the richest people in the world. I had a buddy go there and I'm pretty sure he said that you could buy gold out of vending machines. I'm not bullshitting you on that. Like a lot of countries in the Middle East, the UAE became wealthy because of its rich oil and natural gas resources. Add to that its prime location on the Persian Gulf, which makes it a key trading spot, and you've got a recipe for a successful commerce hub. There's a lot of business that happens in Dubai, which attracts foreign business people. In fact, Dubai's economy is dependent on workers who have expatriated from other countries. As of 2013, 96% of Dubai's population was foreign born. Compared to a city like New York, about 37% foreign born, that figure is staggering. New York's like the melting pot of the world, right? But people are attracted to opportunity and there's been a lot of opportunity in Dubai in the last 20 years. You got bankers, hedge fund managers, investors, and many other types of high-income elite call the UAE home. One of the main draw points for the UAE is that it has no income tax, and that's a huge selling point for people that make my yearly salary in a day. So you can imagine that if you've got a seven-figure plus income that's not taxed, you've probably got some money to burn on supercars. These six-figure daily drivers are a common way of life in Dubai. Of course, you'll see economy cars on the road too, but I can almost guarantee you that you won't feel out of place driving a $200,000 supercar to the mall on Saturday. And trust me, there are plenty of places to shop in Dubai. The taxes are lower, the roads are very well maintained, and it's actually not that hard to find a used luxury car for a good price that wasn't actually abandoned. Supercars are a way of life in Dubai because it's an easy way to show off your wealth. Uh, just, just like LA, that's why everyone drives McLarens now instead of GT3s, which I thought were cooler. Before people move to Dubai, they have an expectation that life will be luxurious. That means most people are buying these cars for Instagram photos and not lap times. Even though these cars are common, it doesn't mean that everyone has them and that's kind of the point. You want to be seen, but you don't want to be seen in the same car as someone else. 
Exclusivity is key in the Dubai supercar scene. Being the only one with that car on the road is a real flex. But that doesn't answer the question why people would just up and abandon these cars on the side of the road. Why on earth are these supercars getting thrown away? Well, it turns out a lot of it has to do with a set of religious laws known as Sharia law. No matter what kind of lifestyle you're trying to lead in Dubai, you'll still have to understand and strictly follow the local laws and customs or face punishment. The economy there has a more worldly connection, but their justice system is partly Sharia and Western law mixed together. This means that there are different consequences for your actions than there would be over here. These infractions range from gossiping to carrying food with poppy seeds to basically a lot of different stuff that's outside the scope of this video. Just like the rest of the world though, stealing is illegal and it can land you in jail. But what's different in Dubai is that being late on payments is akin to stealing. Meaning that if you missed a payment on your credit card, mortgage, or a payment on that brand new flashy McLaren 720S you hastily bought to impress your new friends, you go straight to jail. Loans in the UAE are large, plentiful, and very easy to get. So naturally, people will take on these giant loans to buy a car that stands out just before losing their job or getting a serious pay decrease. So let's say it's 2020 and you're a British expat working as an investor while living in Dubai. Then suddenly a uh, pandemic comes out of nowhere and crushes your entire industry and you lose your job. That loan you're able to get so easily for your supercar that costs as much as a house is starting to look like more of a liability and now you're not left with a ton of options. You either borrow from your friend who still has a job or go to jail. But there's a third option, you get the hell out of Dubai. Even if that means leaving your car on the side of the road. And that's what people did. They ditched their cars in parking garages, they end up in impound lots, they even leave them in the middle of the desert. Some of these cars were dropped so quickly that they still have keys in the ignition and other seemingly necessary items are left behind in a panic. The cars will actually sit in the same place until the police come and tow them away sometimes months later. The local laws slow down the process of moving the abandoned cars down more than you might think. It's not like the US where you can call a tow truck and have it towed immediately. Things are just different over there. The somewhat harsh punishment for, in our eyes, a minimal infraction causes many expats to flee rather than deal with the consequences. Look, I get it. If I had to choose between ditching my dream car or going to prison, I'm leaving my neon SRT4 at Baskin Robbins. It's just not worth it. It's the most popular fast food place in the UAE. So that sucks for those expats who had to leave their Lambos, but how do I, a supercar fan that lives across the fat earth, get my hands on one of these cars? Is it possible? How much money would it take? Do I have to ask James for a loan? I think he would be more happy to have that parked in the side yard than my Imperial. Before you spit and shake on it, the first thing you gotta do is actually find the ride you want. And unfortunately, it's not as easy as pulling up a tab on eBay Motors, searching abandoned supercar and getting the pick of the litter. The first obstacle you'll encounter with any abandoned car in the UAE is locating the title. Like it is over here, whenever you get a loan from a bank to buy a car, you still don't own that car. The bank does until you pay off the loan. They will physically hold on to your title until you've made that final payment. If the person who left their car in the middle of the desert is missing and dipped while their loan defaulted, how do you know who used to own it? How do you know which institution holds the actual title? And you don't really know how much money is left to pay on the loan. These are all questions you'd have to get the answer to. There's no telling the amount of time in between these cars being abandoned and being impounded by the police. If you're not quick enough, these cars get snapped up by the Dubai 5.0 and sometimes get converted into actual police cruisers. I'm sure you've seen these cars before. The police in Dubai know for a fact that their traditional patrol cars from brands like Chevy, Toyota, and Nissan can't keep up with the likes of a Porsche, Mercedes, or McLaren. And even if it's all for show, the police are now driving around some pretty amazing cars. If you're Unlucky, you might see them roll up in a Porsche 918, Aston Martin 177, or a Pagani Huayra. Now that you've missed a chance to buy these cars before they were impounded, it doesn't mean it's impossible to get your greasy nuts on one. But what if you wanted to buy one at a bargain rate? Well, auctions are actually a pretty good place to start. There are auctions, just like in the US, that will give you the opportunity to bid on these crazy cars hoping to get you a good deal. 
you may get your dream car for $30,000 less than a sticker price or just spend $30,000 total on one. That's still beyond something I'm able to afford, but it's cool that I know it can be done. Like a lot of cars you find at auctions here in the States, they'll have what you can call a storied past. Like Supercar Blondie pointed out in one of her videos, a lot of the luxury cars up for auction may have had enough damage to make anyone want to pass on the deal. The damages range from some light body work to flood damage, all the way to being completely total. Make sure you do your research before signing on the dotted line. The normal process of buying from an auction isn't super easy, but there are many guides out there to get you the best deal possible if you actually want to try to do this. As you can see, buying a car from auction is often a difficult task, especially if you're buying said car from an auction on the other side of the world. If you don't feel up to the job, you're not out of luck just yet. This finally brings me to the best option for buying one of these dust covered grates. Because this is so difficult, there are actually companies out there that focus solely on buying these cars at a crazy low price, repairing and prepping them to be sold to a lucky customer with reasonable savings. A company like Carrera Garage or Hush Hush will find these cars, get them in good working condition and ship them directly to you for a nominal fee. And this is probably your best case scenario. It's probably still very expensive though. But in my opinion, it feels like there are way too many things that could go wrong. You know, no offense to those companies. This car has changed hands for reasons unknown. It's been auctioned off, it's been repaired, and sent your way before you even get a chance to touch it. That's a ton of money to be passed around in too many pockets of people across international waters for my own personal peace of mind, okay? If you're really taking this idea to heart, I really suggest you do your own research into the fine minutia of buying one of these abandoned supercars. Even though most of us can't afford to get our hands on one, it's cool to know that if you ever hit the lottery, you're gonna pick up a perfectly good, but dusty Ferrari for the price of a car that's sold on Bring a Trailer, maybe. Thank you very much for watching Wheelhouse. If you liked the video, please consider hitting that like button. It really helps us out. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more. Hit the join button if you're a super fan and wanna join our Discord and get some behind the scenes videos and other cool stuff. If you'd like to hear about hundreds more abandoned supercars, check out our past gas episode on the Sultan of Brunei and his insane collection that's rotting away uh, in the dark. It's a crazy story. Uh, check that out in the link or I'll put it somewhere on the screen. All right, be kind, see you next time.